Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to have a chat about something which is part, I suppose, of an evolving idea when it comes to War Thunder, which is of course the esports section of it. Now Gaijin have invested a ton of time and a ton of money into the esports stuff to try and get more people invested. You know, a lot of the Twitch drop stuff, a lot of hiring different people, you know, whether it be content creators or just general staff, and it's, you know, seems to be doing pretty well. For me personally, the product is a lot better than it used to be. I think uh, the way that they're doing it seems to be working really good, and hopefully more and more people get interested in it as it goes along, as everything improves in the area. But the one thing we're going to be talking about today is the fair play stuff, and this is a problem in pretty much all esports. As a person who follows uh, CSGO, or so I suppose CS2 nowadays, and also League of Legends quite a lot when it comes to their esports scenes, one of the things that's always brought up, or at least in the early days when it really started to take off, was cheating. There was a bunch of players uh, which were um, basically done uh, when it came to cheating. Uh, Kukli or KQLY from France in CS. There was, of course, Flusher, who was accused of cheating for a variety of different reasons. And then also many others in League of Legends, which were banned for the same thing. Now, when it comes to War Thunder, now that they're putting a lot of effort and also a lot of money into the esports side of things, it is now very important to make sure to try and rid that stuff out and uh, try at least to continue to, you know, deal with that. So with the fair play of November 2023 coming out, there was a bunch of players who were actually part of some pretty well-known teams who were also banned. Uh, so uh, Nico, who is part of the esports team at Gaijin, put out a statement. He said, Dear players, players... X, 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 and X, so all five separate players, have been banned from the game for violating rules, namely section 3.2.3 of the Gadget and User License Agreement, the use of prohibited modifications. Basically cheats, whether they be uh, audio cheats or just straight up, you know, straight up banned cheats. Um, the teams, so Mamma Mia, Noesk, Sigma, IAV are disqualified from the Firefront 5v5 RBM Quali Tournament. Alongside the above, players of the following teams, Raw, Sigmaster, and Obalu, have been disqualified from the RBM Tanks 4x4 Tournament, and players from the team Fiat Gang and Oliva teams will not be able to continue participating in the Firefront 3v3 RBM Tournament, and also will be banned from the game for the duration of their matches. Compensation will be thus di distributed among the participants of the teams listed below. And then it gives all of the teams which basically they lost to, uh, meaning that a bunch of people got some GE, they also got some camouflages, and all of these other things. So basically you had a bunch of the esports teams who did pretty well, who had a bunch of cheaters in them. Now this is not new when it comes to War Thunder. Uh, there have been cheaters pretty much across the board when it comes to the competitive side of things. Um, I remember one of the rules that they brought in more recently over the last few years was the idea that you can't use sound mods anymore in competitive areas. Basically because when a team had won one of the competitions, they started gloating about one of the mods that they used to use uh, to be able to beat everybody, which was a hilarious thing and shows that just because you're good at War Thunder doesn't mean you aren't a dumbass. And the other thing is there was a bunch of players who, um, or a bunch of teams from even earlier tournaments who had similar issues to this going back for a long time. So the idea that this doesn't happen and everything is just fair and everything is fine is, well, not true. Everybody will always try and cheat uh, if they are given the ability and they think that they won't be caught. Now, the interesting thing about this, which is why I'm kind of covering it, is the ramifications of this stuff. Um, for example, the team Raw, which we talked about uh, being uh, involved, like one of these players who was um, who was actually banned from this was from there. It says uh, they were actually part of the grand final season of the rank battles uh, from June, if you remember that, season one. 
and they uh, united players from Reda, Olist, and Nasty. Raw became a truly global team. Uh, its members hail from Europe, Australia, and Latin America. So they were a conglomeration of a bunch of other uh, squadrons come together to try and win the season. The problem with this, though, is, as you know, Olist, if uh, they also ran their own competition previously, so you have a band player who is from Raw, who also was involved in... In a in a cup which was made previously before this. So even though these guys have been caught now, you have no idea how long they were actually cheating for, and therefore puts all of these other areas into pretty much disrepute. The other thing, which is also a bigger issue, which I'm not sure will be talked about, but because, you know, I don't know how many people are interested in this, there is a bunch of skins that were actually added in for the the trophy uh, for the esports camouflages for the Thunder Cup earlier in the year. Uh, so you know how they brought in the esports trophy to try and support, you know, the ecosystem, try and support the uh, the camouflage makers and obviously make money for Gaijin so they could put it back into the actual, you know, scene itself. One of the interesting things is there's a bunch of camouflages which were for these teams. So you actually have the M1A2 Sep Raw, Raw skin, you have the Ariete C1 Mamma Mia skin, you have the F16 ADF Raw skin once again, and then the Tornado ADS Mamma Mia skin as well. So these two teams were banned, right? They weren't allowed to be involved in the 5 versus 5 qualifying tournament uh, for Mamma Mia, and Raw was disqualified from the 4v4 tournament. But their skins <laughs> will be represented in the game and will be continued to be represented in the game. Now, the question you have to ask yourself, do you want to have in your game, if you are a creator of said game, a uh, <laughs> a representation of something which is based off of a team that cheated. And it's one of those where, you know, it kind of blurs the lines for what people find acceptable, what people find unacceptable, or what people care about, because I'm sure the vast majority of people don't care about this stuff. But it's just weird to think about, and why you've got to be super careful with actually representing these teams in an official way. It's the same with, like, content creators, right? Like, if you if you give a content creator, like, I don't know, partnership or whatever, and then they just kind of go nuts, and <laughs> you've got to do something about it. It's happened a few times, and it's just something to, like, think about. Like, how do you deal with a situation like this? Do you remove the names of the teams? Do you leave them in because of its historic purpose? Or do you hope that nobody notices and basically you... You just continue going on and then the squadron is allowed to play in the next setup without the player that has been banned. Are these things tainted? Do you have to go back to previous tournaments and think about how many people have been abusing systems if these people were involved before? What do you do with this? And also, at the same time, how much percentage doubt is now brought into the rest of the scene while all this is going on? Now, the thing is, it's been really nice, as I said, seeing the esports stuff do super well in War Thunder. It's a part of the game which hasn't been represented very well over the years, and to see it doing so well is great, because there are, you know, people who are looking for that. But at the same time, when stuff like this comes out, and you have this kind of weird miasma that is sat around the whole thing, and the doubt which is brought in when players get banned from it, it really does just kind of cast the whole thing in a very, very bad light. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Brendan Quinn, Vilnaeus, Character Fuel, Juan the Panda, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, Barine, Peter Grayling, Alan Hacker, Sam Alslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R, and also LaFouche for supporting the channel.